Welcome to the Pivotworks swing arm bearing replacement video. In this video we'll be showing you how to install a Pivotworks swing arm bearing replacement kit. The kit shown in this video includes all the bearings and replacement parts needed including seals to rebuild your swing arm. Begin by removing the rear wheel, brake assembly, and the chain. Next, remove the swing arm nut with a large socket and ratchet. You may have to use a punch or some other blunt object to carefully push out the swing arm pivot bolt. Do not mess up the end of the bolt. You might also strategically place someone on the other side of the bike. Next, you'll need to remove the nut and bolt that connects the swing arm to the shock linkage assembly. Once the bolt is removed, you can then lift out the swing arm by removing the swing arm pivot bolt. Now carefully open the package containing the Pivot Works bearing kit. Push out the inner collars from the old bearings on both sides of the swing arm. You can see in this case that the bearings were pretty well eaten up and definitely needed a replacement. Go ahead and remove the seals from the outer part of the bearings. Now you can pry out the thrust washer and radial bearings using a screwdriver. If you've got a propane torch, it's a good idea to heat up the outer bearing assembly. Makes it much easier for the bearings to come out. Find a socket or a bearing driver, and if you have a big enough vise, you can use the vise as a press to press out the bearing from the swing arm assembly. Be super careful to get the socket lined up exactly right. If it doesn't feel like it's moving, don't force it. The socket or bearing driver must match the outer size of the bearing exactly so that it does not push against the swing arm. You can see here that we've driven the bearing out already about 3 eighths of an inch. Then we're going to flip the swing arm over and drive it out the rest of the way with the same socket. Okay, here we've cleaned the inside of the swing arm mating surfaces very thoroughly and now we're applying some heat with some propane. And here's the trick. If you want to make the job easy, freeze the bearings. The bearings came right out of the freezer and slid right into the swing arm assembly with zero effort. You barely have to turn the vise to get the bearings to slide into a hot swing arm. Okay, there you have it. We now push in the bearing the rest of the way with the same socket. Get it carefully lined up exactly evenly with the edge of the bearing mating surface. And then we go ahead and lubricate the entire bearing with some good quality lubricant. Now we are pre-lubricating the thrust bearings, the radial bearings, and the thrust washers and putting them in. You can see from the diagram here that would be items I and AB. They slide right in and with the grease they stick. And next comes the seal which is basically all there is to it and it's a good idea to slide the collar in first but we did it without this time. Either way the seal pushes in easily with your thumb put the end cap on and you're done with that side. Okay, here we're putting in the radial bearing and thrust washers on the other side. And again, putting the seal in with our fingers. And it pushes in pretty easy. The collar on this side is already in place. We put the outer cap on and we are good to go. Slide in the collars before putting in the inner seals. This is important as you'll see here. You could struggle with this a few times 
or you can put the collar in and it goes fairly easy. Okay, we did the seals first and the collars last this time to show how tricky it can be if you don't do it in the right order. Slide in the collars and you are ready to reattach the swing arm to the bike. Okay, again we're going to show you the hard way here to insert the swing arm into the frame. Because the swing arm fits between the motor and the frame, it's a very tight fit and without someone holding up on the end of the swing arm it can take you a few tries to get it right. Having said that you don't have to push in very hard if you get it lined up just right it will slide right in at which point you want to just shove in the bolt the pivot bolt as we're doing here and with the new bearings in place it should slide in with no effort at all now on the Honda and some other models you're going to have to line up the flat side of the bolt with the frame. There's a matching flat spot on the frame that keeps the bolt from turning and you see there we just whack it around with the rubber mallet and got it lined up pretty easy. Hold the brake down and it'll pop right in. Okay now you can start to button it up, put the brake on and reroute the brake hoses through their clamps just like they were originally and if you have questions about this reassembly part uh, look up the Honda Man okay now you can begin to reassemble the rear wheel assembly that begins with the brake and the brake hoses run them through the clamps the same way you took them apart if you have any doubts about where anything goes, look up the Honda diagrams online or get yourself a South Point manual that shows you exactly where the parts go. Put the swing arm nut on and torque the swing arm nut down to factory specifications, which for the Honda 450 is 68 foot pounds. Install the rear wheel. That's the axle blocks and the axle. The axle blocks are the chain adjuster blocks. Insert them with the little engraved line facing upward. Put on the thrust washer followed by the locking nut and torque the lock nut down to factory specifications. And this concludes the bearing replacement video. Good luck. This concludes the bearing replacement. Ride safe.